greatest value that I hold is respect. To have respect for each and everything. The trees, the birds, the ants. To have respect for them because they were here before us. finishing school I really wanted to kind of take a step forward with the festival scene and you know all these people who go to festivals hippies and such have very good ideas and I was like well let's uh what if we could actually do some active positive work as well you know I had I had contacted them from the year before and it's nice to see a group of people work together year after year that's how you create a solidarity and an understanding of who has what tolerance who is at which end of the spectrum. From last year to this year, we've managed to grow. We, we kind of like doubled our number in, in tribes and participants from within each tribe as well. And then also the people helping with the festival as well. We've grown and we've gotten some more core crew, which you know for an 18 day festival is very important. I'd rather be a part of it than just attend it. I started out as kind of being a volunteer, but then kind of got into production. I'm really interested in intercultural, building of intercultural bridges between uh, modern and ancient cultures and I've been involved in festival culture for many years and, and this is a perfect place to bring uh, a lot of my passions together. Playing the drums, it's like it's like the most freeing thing. It's it's such a, it's it's like a spiritual connection to your roots as well, to the universe because the drum gives you kind of like that that connection with everything else. We share whatever it is that we know. For example, medicine, the music, the food. The festival is essential to, to spreading the culture and having bring awareness to the culture. So the, the, the music and the drums, having people hear that and the way we see you guys dance and vibe to the music is, is everything to us. That gives us a reason to continue spreading the culture. Where we're from, they call New England because it looked like England. Feel like it gets cold. So then they want to put their big Catholic church straight on our sacred sites and finish our culture right up. And they almost did. But now we're just starting to pick up the pieces. All the sacred sites, 
now farmers own it, shopping centre on it, highway through it. So all of our ceremonies from the past, it's like impossible to go back to because the site isn't there anymore or it's something on top. Uh, so we, in the last 30 years, just been bringing back language. Politicians are beginning to really pay attention to the Mayan way of life. The majority of Guatemalans are indigenous, so they got to listen. And Guatemala has proved once, twice, that when the people are together, we can throw the president, the vice president, and we can come united. So I think it's a good chance for this rebirth. I feel really good about it. Maybe if this is happening in my country, there might be a reflection of this in the field, in the conscious field, that it is creating a lot more cultures and a lot more tribes to awake that tradition. Uh, in the future, what I want to do is teach many young fellows as I can, I'm doing it now, uh, so that they don't lose their culture identity and also so then as we heal ourselves, fix ourselves, we need to have our culture places. Before electricity was created, we all gather in the sacred fire. And this is the return of the fire, the beginning of it, you know? Coming back to the fire to share the tales with your grandmother, to share the tales with your, with your relatives, sitting together on the earth, eating together. We lost this connection. And it is these ancient traditions and these uh, ancient plants that are reminding us of what the true human experience is. Take your time, some of you that have the candles. All the candles will go. And this is the only energy that we're going to offer. We're going to ask for the wisdom of this festival. Some of you will experience many things that are going to enlighten your mind, elevate your soul and your spirit. So now take away all our negative stuff. Important traditions that we have been reviving are the our spiritual traditions, and that's the sun dance, that's the sweat lodges, that's our women's ceremony, that's our adoption ceremony. The lodges for the the sweat lodge in Ikaga is the ceremony. That is for the cleansing of the heart, the mind, the body, and the spirit. Preparation for your for the future. Uh, life that you want, but you have to ask Wakantanka, God, you have to ask for that permission to to do the things that you want to do in your life. Hey!
Bueno, yo estoy eh, compartiendo lo que, es, eh, eh, lo que es la cultura. Porque, porque nosotros, este, dentro de la cultura, está la, la medicina para nosotros. Es muy importante que hemos venido manejando desde muy ancestralmente. Entonces, es importante compartir para que eh, los, eh, los amigos de diferentes países, diferentes países del mundo sepan eh, lo que es la importancia de la medicina ancestral milenaria, que sepan lo que es la planta sagrada y que sepan y que tengan conciencia con la naturaleza y que, y que tengan eh, la disciplina también con, la, con, con lo que es eh, eh, el mundo de, de la naturaleza y que no saben también dar mensaje, explicarlo para que sepan y para que prueben y los que han probado ya saben que es una realidad muy diferente y, y, y tiene en su corazón This geometry is known as a Merkaba and it represents the flower of life, which is the basic, the basic geometry of the universe. And in this way, we have a feminine energy and a masculine energy activating inside of this Merkaba. Y el amor incondicional entre todos los pueblos. And the unconditional love between all the peoples. Sur America, Centro America, of South Europa, America, Central Occidente, America. Y todo el continente Europe, completo North America, and all of the continents. Bendiciones para todos. Blessings to all. Well, this medicine was forgotten for a few centuries, but it was among all the Mesoamerican cultures, from the Olmecs to the Aztecs. And right now, there is a rescue of these uh, lost traditions, and I'm doing an international world tour, uh, sharing this medicine with everyone. It's about standing in front of the sun, making a little uh, few deep breaths, and reconnect with the rhythm of the bread and the elements nature the water the the wind the sun and the earth
create this festival in these areas and connect them with the nature is one of the important things. And, and I think you can have spread the message about what it is important to conserve. Part of it is to have the opportunity to see and enjoy the nature so you can really uh, protect what you, if you don't know what you have, you're never going to protect it. Reef and seagrass together. So they are you can learn a lot from the indigenous people, especially for the interaction they have in nature and the interaction they have with plants and animals. I think it's not necessary to have a luxurious life and cars and money. And I think we can learn a lot of them from them because they usually get the basic things you need. They live with the nature and they don't feel that it's necessary to, to destroy what is around. It's very important that they can keep on their traditional world and it's very important that we also start to get and change our life and probably get in toward their traditional way. I'm saying this to you to help you understand why this is important to us. I have love for my people, for my relatives, plants. I'm very uh, passionate about the alteration and the modification of it genetically where you get a greater amount of abundance of yield of plant to eat, but you do not get the nutritional value. We have started our plant project, and the plant project is to recoup, re-acquire uh, all that was taken from us. And right now we're sitting at 700 plants, and we have uh, out of those we we have uh, we're getting the. Uh, Lakota names and their purposes and what they what they were for for us. Now we're going back, and we're going back to where those plants are at. That's what we're going to do, and we will take on the GMO on that level because of the defense of our of our our plant knowledge, not only for foods but for medicines. Para mí es importante para que esté conectado con la naturaleza, ¿no? para que sepa que sí, eh, este, los árboles, eh, la, lo, todo lo que son la, la naturaleza son importantes para el ser humano. Become involved and truly attempt either through political or through social activism or social media to address those issues because when they destroy, it's irreplaceable. Yeah. When especially the earth. It will, it will not be in your children's or your grandchildren's generation that it will regenerate. It's gone for, it, what, 100,000 years, 10,000, 50, half a million years before it will be back to what it was. One of the main reasons I'm here is for the charity project side of it. You know, uh, people that go to festivals, they seem like a very eager, excited bunch that could potentially want to actually go out and kind of be more proactive, but not necessarily like sign up for a two-year Peace Corps type thing. So when I first heard about Geo Paradise and the, the idea that they had of going and doing projects for the communities, I was like, that's really quite perfect, you know? It's been slowly evolving over the four years, you know, first couple projects were very small, just taking some pigs over or donating some chickens. And then we got into bringing one tribe that knows how to grow chocolate over to meet another tribe that uh, wants to learn how to make chocolate. And they were able to do intertribal learning, learn from one another, you know, not us coming in and saying it. And now it's even evolving to this last project we did where we did a volleyball court for the Nobi community where it wasn't just me and the tribe, there was actually other people that came with me and with us, I should say, with Geo Paradise, and helped out and got their hands dirty and everything, which was really good because I tell you, when you're mixing like cement, like eight bags of cement, three trucks loads of dirt, and 12 wheelbarrows of sand, <laughs> the extra hands is always nice. It was a lot of fun. Um, got to go into the Nobe community of Rio Oeste outside of Almirante in the Bocas province. Connected with the community, we were able to bring in supplies and provide something that the community wanted.
It's all of us young bucks out there shoveling that cement and shoveling that dirt, you know, and just going really hard. And then this big pile of cement's ready and you sit down for a moment and then you see the older folks, the, you know, the parents, the dads come in and they're leveling out the cement. And you know that like 20 years ago, they were us shoveling that dirt. And now they're, they're the ones doing the last professional work that the younger guys that I was working with are now looking and learning from. Uh, it's because they know one day they'll be the ones leveling that cement, putting the final touches on, and, and the, the smiles going around. You know, it, it, it's not just a finished project even for me the, uh, of where we get to play the volleyball and they get to use it too. It's even, it's even right there building it and <laughs> seeing those really cool little moments. Now that we've kind of started to find a more permanent location, this last summer we bought three pigs and with the idea and the anticipation to breed them in which two days ago we finally just had our first batch of piglets born. And so the idea is we'll get them a little older now, so you know, uh, about three months when they're weaned off their mother and such, and donate some of them two tribes for the for the same reasons of what we did uh, from the start you know so that they can either raise them or eat them for meat and such and then we'll you know we'll just keep it going and start breeding a few more and and yeah have the availability and uh, chance to do that it's been it's been a journey for for the tribal gathering it has been an escalation of trust it's been an escalation of friendship. Many things that we were close about can be open. Um, the human experience, somebody asked me, uh, Nan, Shuni, are you there yet? And I said to this person, I said, there's always room for improvement. And that's what makes us great, knowing that there's always more, that it doesn't stop there. Well, this, this event has been a great opportunity to meet a lot of people and to share the, the knowledge of my tribe and also learn about other tribes. So it has been a great gift for, for myself and I think that for a lot of people. Y sí hay intercambio cultural, hablamos de, de medicamentos, plantas, intercambiamos, hablamos de la lengua, de nuestras creencias. Yo puedo aprender algo de, de otro pueblo indígena sobre medicina natural y eso yo lo puedo utilizar en mi pueblo para ayudar a otras personas. The best experience would be meeting all type of people. Like the whole world is here in a sense. And having that that experience and that that taste of every everything, every culture, every essence of, 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 of universal existence is, is amazing. And this weave of the tribes coming together this year has been just the most intense, the most emotional, the most vibrant year of all, where we all come together out of time, out of space, out of calendar, just being born together in that sacred fire. So I think that this event has really, it's going to inspire many people. It's going to lead a new nation. I think that all of us together is going to teach us about each other and really come into brotherhood and sisterhood. <laughs>